A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. And the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees. They gathered together, and one of them, a scholar of the law, tested him by asking, Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and the first commandment. The second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. The whole law and the prophets depend on these two commandments. The Gospel of the Lord. Love is the ultimate meaning of everything around us. It is not a mere sentiment. It is the truth. It is the joy that is the root of all creation, says Rabindranath Tagore, the Indian great philosopher and writer. Dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, love is the truth, love is the joy, root of all creation. It is not an emotion, it is not a sentiment, and it is a real, concrete, it is not abstract word, tangible. The love that we talk and we hear, and we also have a lot of things about love. There are many movies they made, and many stories, poems, and songs written. And the more we try to know about love, the more we go more deeper and deeper. Unending, I, when we depend on our only human things, so we never be satisfied in the love. But when we go to God, and also experience is love, our life will be satisfied with the love of God and love of neighbor. St. John, in his first letter, chapter 4, verse 8, St. John says, Anyone who does not love does not know God, because God is love. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God is love. So that is why when we experience that love and when we go more deeper and we also in our lives will be so much with the satisfaction and also we receive eternal reward by God and through the love that we experience, dear brothers and sisters. The real lover is not an ab abuser. Honest lover is not a manipulator. Or genuine lover is not a person. The true love, when we experience within the families, within the relationship, husband and wife, our parents and children, we truly establish on this earth new heaven and new earth. That is the greatest experience we also have because of God's presence in our life. If you remember last Sunday's Gospel, there are two groups. Disciples of Pharisees and also Herodians, they approached Jesus, they asked the question, Is it lawful to pay the census tax to Caesar or not? 
when they asked Jesus said repay to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and to God what belongs to God and today's gospel reading again the pharisees they came together why because the reason was given and the pharisees heard that jesus had silenced the sadducees they gathered together then one of them a scholar of the law tested him by asking so sadducees they approached jesus and also that those are the people who didn't believe in the resurrection and they try to trap jesus or try to find jesus something wrong in his teaching and talked about a, a marriage status of the marriage is like a woman married man man died and she married seven people and all the story they made it and making or something complicated but jesus talked about that about the heavenly relationships and something great then by jesus words they were silence jesus had silenced the sadducees then now the pharisees they gather together not to learn things from jesus christ not out of curiosity they approach but they asked through a, a scholar of the law a question teacher which commandment in the law is the greatest it is not about talking about 10 commandments which commandment is the greatest in the 10 commandment it's not that which commandment in the law is the greatest they are asking in the law so there were many commandments regarding the law so as i said man always complicate the things and you think about family and you think about our system itself or sometimes when we go with our own lives we complicate things but god he always simplifies the things that is more evident and clear in today's readings and we also experience how much jesus so try to simplify the things and help the people to do god's will and to also follow god his commandments and when we think about how god simplifies the things we remember matthew chapter 18 1 to 5 so disciples asked jesus who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven jesus did not say this president is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven he didn't say that or this rich man is the greatest in the kingdom of he didn't say that or any other things but what he did he placed amidst them a little child showing little child and jesus said this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven what does it mean and jesus brings little things to explain greatest things that is what happened in the gospel reading jesus showing the little child unless you become a child like this will not enter into the kingdom of god so what are the good qualities that we find in the children they depend on the parents which means when we realize we are children of god we depend on our god and we are also experiencing all the power and strength from heaven again children they don't hold grudges or they always forget and forgive all the things when you experience that within your soul within your heart they also experience the kingdom that is why jesus said this is the child greatest in the kingdom of heaven 
Again, when Jesus talked about the faith, Matthew chapter 17, 28 and 21, we see uh, Jesus said, so if we have the faith, the size of mustard seed, so again he simplified, mustard seed is a very small seed. He did not say, if we have the size of mountain faith, he didn't say that. He said, size of mustard seed, you can do great things. So today's uh, reading, mainly when they asked, the reason because there are many, many, many commandments adding on the Ten Commandments. God gave them Ten Commandments. By the time Jesus came, they made them supporting commandments. Um, there are 613 commandments. So 248 positive commandments means we have to do this, do that, do this, do that. And again, 365 negative commandments. Don't do this, don't do that. Don't do this, don't do that. Negative. All together, confusing people, common people to follow those commandments is a very heaviness they experience. But dear brothers and sisters, in today's uh, gospel, Jesus answered the scholar and he said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the greatest, the first commandment. Jesus did not stop there. He continued, the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So these are not the new commandments. Jesus brought them from the Old Testament, book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6, 4 and 5. We love our God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind. Again, book of Leviticus, chapter 19, 18. So you shall love your neighbor as yourself. He brought them. And what is new here? The newness is here. Jesus brought them together. Both the commandments, love of God and love of neighbor. And he also brought them together such a way that he also said all the law and the prophets depend on these two commandments. If you want to practice other commandments, if you practice these two, so how much is simplified? 613 commandments into just, he made it two commandments. How much God simplified. So don't mess up with the, all the complications in your life. And God wants to tell you, and he also shows his love, his forgiveness, his compassion in your life. So don't try to accuse, don't try to judge. Don't try to put yourself down or put other people down or complicate the things. Instead of that, have these two commandments, love of God and love of neighbor, that will produce great fruit of peace and joy in the community and also in our lives, dear brothers and sisters. In today's uh, responsorial psalm, Psalm 18, we all responded, I love you, Lord, my strength. It is the experience of King David. God blessed him and God anointed him and God gave him victory. And he is also expressing his heart by singing this psalm, saying that you are my rock, you are my shield, you are my deliverer, and you are my salvation, you are my savior. Something uh, King David, he experienced that, I love you, Lord, my strength. You are my strength. If you want to love your God and neighbor, experience God's strength from heaven, dear brothers and sisters. One more beautiful thing, when you go more deeper with the first uh, commandment Jesus said, love your 
God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. How many are there? Three. One, with all your heart. Two, with all your soul. Three, with all your mind. What does it mean? He's not telling, love your God, 50% of your mind or 50% of your heart or 50% of your soul is telling love your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. So soul is the seat of all our feelings and all our emotions. So when you love your God completely, not half half, not 50%, 60% or 70%, when you love God, and you are raising all your feelings to God. You are raising all your emotions to God. And you are loving Him. Again, what is the soul? It is a divine nature. Soul has divine nature. All who are here, you have the soul. And with that, we will be satisfied because God's presence remains within our soul. Since they experience a lot of God's joy and power because they love God with all their hearts and souls and minds. What about with all your mind? It's an intellectual. And intellectually, we love our God completely. So seeking God's presence and showing our concern and intellectually reading the scripture and also meditating and also reflecting, help us to love God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind, dear brothers and sisters. It's a beautiful thing. And again, it is love that makes the extra mile possible. It is love that makes the extra mile possible. The first reading we heard, Exodus Book of Exodus, God said, be compassionate towards the strangers and also widows, orphans and the poor. So show that compassion. So when we love God, when we love our neighbor and we truly show God's love because of that strangers, we love them. You know the about the Good Samaritan, that's a beautiful story. Jesus said, who is my neighbor? And he said the Good Samaritan. The Good Samaritan didn't know who was wounded, but still he loved by doing something good for him. And again, Jesus said, Matthew chapter 25, so when I am hungry, you fed me. When I am thirsty, he gave me water. When I am naked, he gave me the clothes. When I am in the prison, and you visited me. So righteous people ask, when did we do all these things? And the, the, the Lord says, if you see, if you do least of my brethren, you are doing to me. That is a true compassion, true love that we show towards our brothers and sisters Dear brothers and sisters, St. Paul, in his letter to Romans chapter 5, verse 8, he says, God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Christ died for us. That is a beautiful thing we see on the cross. Still we are sinners. Not that we deserve it. Not that uh, we are great. But still we are sinners. He offered himself, showed the greatest love. And also Jesus himself said during the time, the Last Supper, after washing the feet of his apostles, John chapter 13, verse 34 and 35, I give you a new commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. Jesus did not say, love one another. That's it. You do it. Instead of that, what he said? 
love one another as i have loved you i showed you that love so so that when people see you they recognize you as you are my disciples so by loving our brethren our neighbor who are our neighbor immediate what is your family so when we think about our family so are we loving are we sometimes there is a danger we hurt the people who love us more god loves us more we hurt by disobeying him and in the family husband and wife our children sometimes the love is more and even with our words and with our actions and we also hurt them but one thing dear brothers and sisters jesus loved us first and he showed his greatest love on the cross that is why being a disciple of christ we need to practice the true love that we received and where do you get that love how do you get that love saint paul in his letter to romans chapter 5 verse 5 he said that hope does not disappoint because love of god has been poured out into our hearts through the holy spirit that it has been given to us so love of god is poured into our hearts through the holy spirit that is why we have that love through baptism confirmation with all the blessings that we receive we have that only the thing we need to recognize only the thing we have to open our hearts and minds for the for the reality that god showed in our life dear brothers and sisters so once it happened there are a couple two married couple after 10 years of their marriage uh, they were fighting so much misunderstanding so much anger and conflicts everything uh, becoming a point of accusing each other and fighting each other it became so hell experience and they said that father we had a great marriage the celebration was good In the beginning we really enjoyed our life but again slowly things changed now anything comes up every word we speak is turning into the poison means fighting 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 then and they talk with me i showed to them the cross a crucified lord i explained to them do you know why all the marriages all the relations are falling down more the divorce rate is going up separations are going because lack of love of god and love of neighbor if there is a love of god and love of neighbor we'll see things differently we see the things differently because when you look at the cross crucified lord on the cross there are three things that show us number one it is covenantal love once you are married and talking to god saying yes lord we are here that is covenantal love and again is sacrificial love so marriage means uh, as i said it is not like a we have two rings engagement ring and marriage ring there is a third ring that is suffer ring is a part of life suffer ring so when you have that sacrificial love jesus sacrificed completely again it is unconditional love you know from the cross he forgave he said that forgive they don't know what they are doing so when i explain this to this couple and talking about this three covenantal love sacrificial love and conditional love again i asked them to read first corinthians chapter 13 uh, 1 to 13 the st paul talks about the love if you do all great things if you don't have the love so everything is meaningless he explained everything about the love in one chapter 
I want you to read uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, 1 to 13. When you have the problems with husband and wife, just read this and look, uh, just stand in front of the cross and pray, God, covenantal love you brought us together. Sacrificial love, you have given up children and all the blessings. Unconditional love, many times you forgave us. And I talked with these two couple after they went back to their home and prayed together. They are looking each other into their eyes. They realized all the things they did each other, how they are hurting them. That melted their heart. They began to cry and reconciled and said sorry to each other. Then they began to grow in the love of God and love of neighbor that transformed all their life. Then after many years, again I saw them, a very happy couple. They say, we go to the church and whatever God speaks to us, we practice them and we always go to the cross because the love that you explained to us and also St. Paul explained to us, no more being like a child, being an adult, and also how that love together, that transformed dear brothers and sisters. Love transforms, love changes, love renews, love reforms our families, our individual lives, our community. And finally, and I said finally we'll be happy. <laughs> finally, my famous quotation, if we love, don't say in thousand times. Instead, show your love through your deeds for God and for our neighbor. And again, dear brothers and sisters, St. John Vianney, the great saint, known for the confession and also holiness, he prayed a beautiful prayer about how he loves God. And John Vianney said, I love you, O oh my God, and my only desire is to love you until the last breath of my life. And also he continued, I love you, my infinitely lovable God. I would rather die loving you than live without loving you. Praise the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.